Okay, so for this week of awareness meditation training, we're exploring embodied awareness. Now, I'm going to, this talk is all about what is embodied awareness and how does it relate to what we've done so far in this training. Um, I could also, the phrase that comes up for me too with embodied awareness is coming home to ourselves, coming home in embodied awareness. So this, uh, this feeling is more palpable in, uh, in awareness, okay, in our experience of awareness. So um, again, we're kind of in the, the phase of the training where we're talking about working with obstacles in practice or seemingly uh, obstacles. Um, so last week was thoughts and now we're working with the body. But in many ways, we're really befriending the body and awareness as we're doing this practice. Uh, so one of the main reasons why we do this is because this allows us to have a more integrative experience of awareness. It is part of our lived experience, so not something that's limited to formal practice. So we might have experiences in formal practice. Um, they might feel you know, sometimes ordinary, but sometimes extraordinary in, in meditation. And then, you know, we get off the cushion and we say, well, where's that experience? Where, where are those qualities of awareness? Well, this embodied awareness practice helps make this a more continuous, natural experience in our life, okay? So I wanna share five points here um, related to embodied awareness. And really these come from Judith Blackstone, uh, except I'm paraphrasing her and then adding some of my own commentary. So I don't take this as uh, a literal teaching on realization process from Judith Blackstone. Um, but this is where the roots are. So if you wanna explore more of this, um, her approach is really wonderful for embodied awareness and really for a non-dual realization. So uh, the points here, I'm just gonna list out some of these points and then explore them in more detail. And then we'll talk about the practice we're gonna to do today, uh, what it's like a little bit more hands-on when we're doing it. So, uh, First is the point I just made really that this is an integration of our realization of awareness more fully into our embodied lived experience. Okay, that's the point here. Uh, two, um, we, we discover that we can experience the qualities of awareness such as spaciousness, stillness throughout our being regardless of whatever is happening in the physical body or emotionally. Um, even if it's only a little, even if it's just a taste of this awareness, uh, meaning that, uh, you know, our, our bodies are not obstacles, you know, to awareness, uh, our emotional difficulties are not obstacles. They're important. So this is going to be another point here. Um, and which is uh, that when we attune to these qualities of awareness of, for example, spaciousness, stillness, openness, we can rest in that as a foundation for healing work, especially around emotions, relational and uh, emotional wounds and trauma. That can be a beautiful supportive foundation. In doing this practice, embodied awareness, we will naturally become more aware of what needs our attention and love and care. So I mentioned this because it, it just happens, okay? So this is natural to become aware of parts of ourselves that don't feel that open, okay? And so we notice that, all right? Um, and last here, even though we're not focused on healing work and emotional healing or relational healing, um, that kind of work actually really helps us to open up even more deeply in our lived experience to these qualities of spaciousness and stillness to awareness. So here we can see that it's not an either or, either we can experience vast openness and spaciousness and stillness, or we work with our, our um, constrictions in the body and, and uh, you know, emotional wounds. There's a, it's a both and, it's supportive, okay? So now to get into all this a little bit more, a little more details, um, just a couple of kind of footnote caveats for in Judith Blackson, we talk about fundamental consciousness in her approach. Um, how we talk about awareness at Buddhist geeks and a lot of times in Buddhist tradition, 
these terms might be interchangeable. Now in, in Judith's approach, she also uses the word awareness um, as uh, one of these qualities of fundamental consciousness. So this is a footnote. You don't need to memorize this or anything, but I just point that out in case you go read her work and then you're like, wait a minute, we're talking about awareness. She's talking about fundamental consciousness. Don't worry about it right now, okay? But I did want to put that footnote. So one other point I want to make here is a little quote, paraphrase from one of the mentor I work with, Hokai Sobel. He said, uh, wherever there is an experience, there's a body. So make this point here to also indicate that one, it's impossible to leave out the body. Okay, the body, there, there's always a body. Now we can talk about different bodies. So if we look at Buddhism, integral theory, we can talk about different bodies, but regardless, we can just say there's always a body, no matter what experience we're having, there's the body. So you're on the cushion and you experience some formless state of awareness. You experience the formlessness, your body's there. You are breathing in that experience, okay? So even if, for example, we're not consciously aware of the body, the body is there. So again, not an obstacle already there, might as well include it in our practice, okay? Now, to dive into some of these points I just mentioned a little bit more, as far as integrating our realization of awareness more fully into our lived experience, which we would call embodiment, embodied awareness, um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the one of the probably the quickest signs is that we feel disconnection between again our formal practice and then our daily life. We long for that experience of of awareness that we have on the cushion in our daily life, but that seems at odds. So we have to find a way to practice, to, to, to attune to awareness as an ordinary lived part of our experience, okay? We have to practice that way. If we practice that way, then no problem. It'll be seamless when we go about our day, work, and relationships. It'll just be much more natural uh, occurrence for us. Uh, Judith will also talk about uh, how when we have our realization or our cultivating qualities in our meditation practice, we have our tendencies and habitual tendencies to experience awakening, to experience awareness in only part of our body, one part of our body. Now, this is going to be different for all of us because we all have our unique existence okay even if we talk about awareness being timeless you know not limited to any one of us we all have this experience of awareness well it's really common for example in meditators and buddhist meditators and people who really love awareness practice to awaken to awareness from here up and what's really interesting is when we're practicing and we're, if we're practicing only attuning to awareness we may say well i'm not really aware of the body or what's going on but if we were to pause and I would ask you, as you're having this experience, what do you notice in your body? Well, if you say, well, I really feel an openness in, in my head, but I feel nothing really in my midsection, this is what we mean. So you can ask yourself this question um, in practice. And um, so it's really interesting that even though we're attuning to something that feels formless and it's not limited to form, our subjective experience of it might feel constricted and limited. And so that was definitely an experience for me, you know, practicing in Sogjin for many, many years, that it was very much like I could feel very open here, you know, in the head and even out and around the head outside. But to experience it throughout my body, to rest here in awareness, ah, that was different. So I, I remember this instruction from Judith the first time I heard it and how surprising it was that I had practiced for so long with awareness, but never had never noticed that I was really only experiencing awareness in part of my being. So this could be very different, okay? Uh, depending on our path, we may awaken from the chest more, like if we're more into towards love, power in the midsection and so on. So it, it depends, okay? 
But through embodied awareness, we can have a more full, integrated, less fragmented, more whole experience of uh, realization. Now, here we're not talking simply about the physical body, but it really is our um, the phrase used in integral, the integral community from Ken Wilber is our cosmic address. Like here, here's where I am. You're right there. Okay, and the body demarcates this. Okay, so we definitely are including the physical body, but we're not limiting embodiment to the physical body. Okay, because we can talk about uh, energy, subtle energy, for example, the movement, the heat, the pulsing streaming of the body. Whereas the physical body, we might talk about bones and organs and muscles and things like that. And then we can also talk about that pervasive awareness, pervasive stillness and spaciousness. That's part of our embodied experience, okay? We can also talk about uh, qualities that feel inherent to being human, that it's, it's also fundamentally part of who we are. And uh, Judith will point to this in, in these practices as well. For example, our ability to know that awareness mind is knowing and we talk about a mirror, you know, you hold something in front of the mirror, the mirror reflects it immediately. Mind is like that too. So we have this fundamental capacity to know, okay? Um, to express ourselves, to love, to experience love, okay? That's not dependent on anything, it just is, okay? Now we have all kinds of different experiences, like when we get really nitty gritty, like we have all kinds of thoughts, we have different areas of knowledge in life, and we have lots of different experiences of love, both beautiful and painful. But underneath all that, there's a foundational ground, a foundational quality. So we include that in embodiment as well. So basically, body awareness means including all of who we are in practice, not leaving anything out. A little quote here from Judith. Uh, Once we have attuned to fundamental consciousness, our realization continues to develop. It pervades more of our body and becomes increasingly clear, symmetrical, and stable. So that to me is a really simple summary of what's happening here and what we mean by it becoming more of an integrated uh, part of our lived experience. Okay, so now to the other, uh, next point about this, ex this experience of embodied awareness is available to us immediately right now. And that whatever's happening in our physical body is not inherently an obstacle, okay? that whatever emotional difficulties or emotional wounds or patterns we have are not inherently obstacles to us experiencing embodied awareness, that we can have a taste of it, okay? This doesn't mean that we should be able to experience it right now, okay? This is why we practice, but it's just not an obstacle. So the good news here is that we don't have to solve all of our problems first. This to me is really good news because it's like, I got problems, <laughs> okay? This is like, we all experience a lot of difficulties. But it's a relief to say, okay, it's possible to experience at least a modicum of, of stillness and spaciousness. And um, Judith will talk about fundamental consciousness, or here we can talk about awareness, being unbroken, uninjurable. So there's a dimension, a quality of us that is uninjurable. There, we are injurable, but this quality is not, okay? So both and. So here up front, we can let go of any idea of perfection from the get-go. We might be attuning to a quality that we might call perfect, you know, but I don't use that word, but it's just, it is what it is, you know, awareness is, okay? Um, but we don't need to have this uh, start off with expecting perfection, um, that we have to solve all of our problems, um, and that it's possible to experience this right now. Okay. Um, now, in terms of providing a foundation for the healing work in life. My experience of this is what when I can attune more to the spacious still quality that pervades my being, my body's existence, I feel more room and spaciousness for everything that is difficult, for everything that needs uh, my attention. Okay, so we're honoring what needs healing um, by attuning to this awareness and uh, that there's more room for it it can breathe more, potentially more possibility, okay? And um, in that, in all this, you know, there's there's gonna inevitably be a sense of 
of love, of tenderness, of heart that comes up, even if it's not a heart focused practice explicitly, it's really natural to, to feel some heartfulness in this. Okay. Um, now, uh, becoming more aware <laughs> of, of what needs healing. Okay. This is another point. Um, this is inevitable. So when we, we're going to be doing a practice where we inhabit the body, where we attune, as Judith will say, fundamental consciousness, tuning to awareness throughout the body. Um, we're going to find parts of ourselves that, 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 that don't feel open, that feel constricted, that feel maybe overwhelming, tight, diffuse, whatever it might be. This is natural. Okay. It's really natural. Um, and partly there, that's good news. It's like, ah, now this is part of my awareness. We're including more of ourselves. Now I know that, oh, um, there's, you know, a tender tightness in my chest that's wanting my attention. Okay. I know that's there. I don't have to solve that right now, but when I'm ready, I can look at that and meet that with practices that would be really useful to, to explore that particular constriction. So approaching this from non-perfection, um, with self-compassion, with patience is really, really important. And even if we're, even if up front, you're like, ah, I don't want to, I don't want to do any of this healing stuff. Okay. I mean, I want to say you're going to, that's not going to work, but taking the patient gentle approach is really, really wonderful for attuning to that awareness throughout our, our being. So it's not something that we can force or apply a lot of effort. There is a lot of letting go and it's letting go through our embodied experience. So this approach of, com of compassion and patience is really, really useful across the board. Um, now, last, uh, healing work itself will help us to, to open up, to experience awareness more easily and naturally in our uh, embodied experience. So if, as I just mentioned, so if there's like a tightness in my chest, well, if I work with techniques, different practices, therapy, you know, whatever it might be, ah, I can understand that more. I can work through it more. It can release. Judith has a technique of constriction release where we kind of feel how it winds up and to start experiencing the grooves that it has, you know, in the body and we release and open it. Well, through that healing, there is openness. Okay. So it supports us resting in awareness. Okay. So again, both and a quote out. Ah, one other thing too. Um, Well, I want to read this. I'll read this quote first here from Judith. So uh, she says, we move from fragmentation to wholeness in this process of embodied awareness. All of our senses function at the same time. Sensation, emotion, and cognition are simultaneous. We experience our inner and outer life at the same time. Perceiver and perceived are a single perceptual field. So again, including all of ourselves, resting in all of ourselves more and more over time. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can think, feel, and sense at the same time. Now in this practice, you know, and approaching it in a, a way of not expecting perfection, what's really neat, my observation with myself and working with others is that even if we have just a little bit of a taste or, or, or we, we sense the possibility, there's a nice positive feedback loop where one little taste adds to the confidence that, ah, this is who I am. Even if I'm not experiencing all the time or fully throughout my whole being, ah, I can, I can sense that and it encourages another moment of practice, uh, another day of practice. And we have more and more of this experience of resting within ourselves as awareness. And it just, yeah, positive feedback loop that deepens over time. So practicing today, again, we're going to do a short version of attuning to fundamental consciousness. And um, this is, as I mentioned, an experience of inhabiting the body, not just being aware of the body from the outside or from the top down, kind of like looking at our body, to live within the body, to rest in qualities of spaciousness and stillness and openness, which is how we often describe the experience of awareness. So, um, and again, you know, this is if this is the first time doing it, and then there's always a, uh, a, a little period of getting familiar with the technique, right? 
how does this work? What's what are the steps? And then, as I mentioned, you know, it may may take a little bit of getting familiar with the practice to start having uh, a real sense of of the possibility of of what we're talking about here. Um, we can even experience spaciousness, this spacious quality, not only within ourselves, but also within our environment, that the spaciousness pervades who we are in the environment and we're resting in that spaciousness as that spaciousness. And in that we can let go of a grip on our experience more and more. Now, one way I like to point to this in terms of this possibility is that when we've worked with uh, pointing out awareness before, when we're not explicitly talking about the body or embodied awareness, we point to the fact that thoughts aren't, aren't obstacles. And with the concentration practice, we concentrated, blocked distractions and thoughts, and then stopped concentrating and coasting into openness, emptiness of, of, of awareness. So we can recognize it. Yes. Okay. Here is awareness, but the thoughts aren't a problem. Okay. And um, this is the same thing of awareness pervading our body, okay? That this spaciousness, this what is normally background in our experience is there and we can experience it as the foreground of our experience throughout our body, just like we did with awareness and thoughts, except now it's throughout our whole being. So a um, few more practical tips before we do this um, meditation. So again, we're inhabiting the body, not scanning it. We will be going through the body uh, kind of one part of time, like feet, ankles, lower legs, but we're not scanning it again from the outside. Not We're not just being aware of the shape of the body, the contour. Um, you might be aware of sensations in the body, but that's not the focal point. That's mindfulness looks at sensations. And in Buddhist geeks, we have a an icon of a circle with a lot of dots in it. And these are like all, all the things that are happening. And through that, we can become more and more open. But in this practice, we're not concerned with noting all the sensations. We're concerned with resting in the space around those dots, right? Resting in that space while things are arising and passing, okay? This is not, even though this has form to the practice and we're doing something, it's not a practice of doing. It's not a practice of efforting. Okay, this is a practice of inviting ourselves to come to rest within ourselves, to attune to this, uh, to attune to awareness throughout ourselves. Um, applying too much effort or straining too much is counterproductive. That'll happen, okay, right? You'll notice sometimes you're straining, you'll notice sometimes you're spacing out. Okay, that happens. But unlike a concentration practice, for example, that requires effort and focus, this is not like that, okay? And it, this is kind of a practice where you'll notice the difference. This is how you'll notice the difference between being present without a, an attention that's focused. This is how you'll notice the difference, okay? So don't expect that you should understand that right from the get-go, you might experience that. But here we're setting ourselves up with a view of how we should approach the practice, okay? Um, if you noticed constrictions or parts of your body that uh, and, and being that feels overwhelming, no need to push at all, okay? Noticing it is just fine, okay? You can work with that over time. If it's too overwhelming, you can just drop the practice altogether, okay? This is really important. Actually, this is really the best approach, in my opinion, to embodied awareness, is just being with ourselves as much as we can and not pushing, okay? Uh, I will, uh, Judith will talk about uh, these practices as being more like stretches, okay? So meaning that uh, just like we've talked about with awareness, nothing is producing awareness. We're not creating awareness. We're not trying to configure something in just the right way in our practice so that way we, we can experience awareness. We're doing these practices to make it more likely that we can just rest in awareness, okay? So this practice is just the same. 